um, if the camera's already at the back. Um, if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll come to you. Um, we'll kick off with a live section going to 10.30 tonight. Um, if you have a, give you a question, we'll start with Dharmesh from Sky. Hi, good afternoon. Um, can we start off with series, first of all? Yeah. Any updates, Martin? <laughs> do you expect him to be fit? Not uh, many updates. Uh, we still have 24 hours, and we are trying to have everybody fit and available. And is that the same uh, with, with Tommy Asu? Because we saw him trying yeah. to do today. Yeah, he did the first part. Gabby didn't. Um, but yeah, that's what we're hoping for. I'll come to the, the game tomorrow. Just reflections on the weekend. I'm sure you've watched the game. <laughs> How do you now view this title race? Because Arsenal are top. Yeah. Well, it's great to be top, that's for sure. Um, it was an amazing um, game of football with two magnificent teams, uh, with so many alternatives. And uh, I think it's a, an amazing situation that we are in involved, looking at the level that those two teams have, that we are still there and we are still at the top. So. The ambition races, uh, we want to continue to be there and, and we have to go game by game. After Saturday, you, you talked about how the players wanted to win that game for Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah. Could you just describe, as a result of that, how much the group has galvanised and yeah. describe the bond within that squad just now? Uh, the unity around the players is, is amazing because it's organic, it's natural. Um, they really feel for, for each other and... Uh, and when they had opportunities to do something um, to make somebody look better or or or, may, or getting them out of trouble, um, they are all ready to do it. And and it was a great example again of of the um, of the quality of of the team and people that we have within there. It was your eighth Premier League win in a row. It was 33 goals in that time as well. And yet in the middle of that, this is anomaly of that Porto game when you didn't actually have a shot on target. What do you think you'll have to do differently? Mm. on tomorrow night compared to what happened out there? Yeah, we're certainly going to have to tweak a few things um, to generate much more than, than what we did uh, against them. But um, yeah, it's, it's the level of the Champions League. Um, you're facing top teams. Um, the fact that there are two games as well plays a little bit in, in your mind and uh, we're going to have to be better tomorrow. Just a final one for me, Mikko. Arsenal haven't reached the quarterfinals yeah. competition since 2010, which seems incredible. What would it mean to you to guide the team into the last day? And what would it do for the club and their standing around Europe to do that? That's the opportunity that we have tomorrow in front of our people in our stadium for 96 minutes. Uh, bring your energy, bring your noise, and uh, let's do it together. Thank you. George from BBC. Mikko, you just on that, you've referenced it again about the, the fans, and you said the stadium having the night of its life. Mm. Do you think the, the fans are going to have to, because it's going to be a tough game, do you think they're going to have to, it's, it's almost, they really see you over the line? I think the impact that they can make tomorrow, it's incredible. I don't think that they realise. Um, so we need that, we need that noise, we need them playing every single ball with us. And we need that emotional control as well, you know, to understand that the game can go through certain phases and we have to be really intelligent to push in the right moments to get what we want. But it's a beautiful opportunity to live those nights. It's been 14 years, so everything that we put in there is, is going to be worth it. As a manager, what does it feel like on the touchline when you hear the crowd picking up and the players, they seem like reacting to it? That I want to go there and play, you know, and and that's the feeling that we have, that is it's a joy to be part of of this club to be part of um, these kind of games and, and tomorrow is going to be a, a great night. Um, what have you learned and the players learned from yeah. that Porto match when you look back at it because they really slowed it down, there was lots of mm. fouls in the match, you had more possession but they sat back so what have the players learned and I know Saliba said that they need to be a bit more smarter, I just wondered how you transmitted that to them yeah. this week. Every, every week every opponent has his um, his strengths, his weaknesses, and, and in the way of they approach the game. And um, and now we know a bit better. Uh, we played these kind of games many, many times in the Premier League. We played one three days ago. Um, so we just focus on, on being ourselves and do more of the things that we can control better than we did um, a few weeks ago. And just one more. I mean, this could be an unbelievable week for you, that you could be in the quarterfinals in the Champions League and you could be top of the league. I mean, with 10 games to go... and plus more in the Champions League. I mean, this could be a thrilling end to the season for us. Yeah, we have to make it happen tomorrow and uh, we're going to have to be very good to to achieve that. OK, Mark from PA. Hi, Miguel. You Hi. talk about the fans having to be emotional and show passion and things like that, but for 
for your players on the pitch is there has to be a certain level of controlling that passion and emotion. For sure, but uh, obviously the game, the game context is very important, um, and we know that we have a, a long match to play, and it can be moments where uh, it can go your way, and uh, moments that uh, that can change dramatically quick, and that's the Champions League as well. So emotionally, you have to be very prepared to play those kind of games. We spoke to you in Portugal about this, the lack of experience in your squad. So how mm. important is it ahead of tomorrow that you can? on Jesus and Zinchenko and players that have actually experienced it? Yeah, well, unfortunately, we haven't had them for long periods uh, this season. Uh, the same like someone like Thomas as well. But uh, it's what we have. We have others as well. We learn with the experiences of, of playing those games and uh, the boys will be ready tomorrow. And if, if you wanted to, I know you, you wouldn't say, but are they fit enough to maybe start tomorrow? Or is that something... Would, it, would we like to see him on the bench again? Well, everybody that is available, I think, has to has to be available enough to play because you might have to play after five minutes or from the start. And uh, they was in a good place. Kaya? Um, Hi. You mentioned before about making you want to be a player again, the, the atmosphere. I just wondered, what are your best memories as a, a these European nights when you were playing? Well, I have a few. Um, the one we played here with Barca, with Bayern Munich as well. It was it was an amazing night as well when we had to do a comeback against Milan. So there are a few, but um, but obviously now is is recent. It's about to, tomorrow, about to the present, and we have to make it happen tomorrow. You mentioned those those games there. There's a lot of cases getting so close, but we get so far. What will you do to make sure your team can, can get over the line this time as opposed to maybe where you? Yeah, prepare the best possible way, make uh, a lot of right decisions and um, and then be brave and have the courage to make things happen. You cannot wait in this situation. You have to go and make things happen and, and that's the approach tomorrow. Jordan? Mikhail, there's a picture on social media this week of a whiteboard with the players saying how playing at the Emirates makes them feel. Can you just tell us a bit about that? Sorry? Can you tell us a bit about that? Was that something that you put on for the players, asked them to do it? I haven't seen it. Have you not seen it? No. no. Um, just come, just keeping on the, the atmosphere, you said you don't think the, the fans realise the impact they can have. Was there a game early in your career where you realised as a player that you know it made you feel something different, more powerful on the pitch? Yeah, well, the first derby that I played with PSG against Marseille, I could not believe the atmosphere. I went to Scotland and I played the, the old firm and I was shocked. So, yeah, it can play a huge part in you. It can give you so much energy and belief and and uh, I'm sure tomorrow is going to be like that. OK, we've got we've got a few people from Portugal now, so we'll go firstly to RTP, I think it is Hello, there. Yeah. Uh, Michael, I have Hello. Two questions for you. If you can answer in Spanish, it's better for us. Um, the first one is to, to be on the top of the league is important. It's better for you to prepare um, the game of tomorrow. And if you expect the same FC Porto of the first leg. Bueno, ganar siempre ayuda, entonces la parte emocional es muy importante para un partido como el de, el de mañana y después de haber ganado estamos en un buen momento y no lo sé, es un equipo que, que normalmente una tiene identidad muy clara y, y no esperamos muchos cambios, pero, pero dependerá también del contexto del partido, del resultado y, y de lo que vaya pasando. ¿A qué onda? Hola, Miquel. ¿Te sorprendió, te sorprendió la forma de jugar de... de... Did you were surprised by the way the Porto played in the first game? And what do you expect on the second game? And what can we expect uh, tomorrow? We have to have more courage and and better in certain phases in game, especially in Portugal. Uh, speaking about the game against Porto, what has annoyed you? the way that Porto played and Porto always played in this particular way is there a lot of fouls yes Hi, Miguel. Uh, two quick questions uh, yeah. usually when a, when a player doesn't train the day before the game he hardly makes it what are the chances of Martinelli playing tomorrow percentage you won <laughs> 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 there are options and sorry and, and about <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> after, after the match, Sergio Conceição said that Arsenal wanted to play and Porto wanted to win. What's the interpretation of this? There is no interpretation. There are strong, that's a strong words. 
Okay, a couple there at the back there. Thank you. Hi, Michael. You took uh, my colleague took my uh, my, my question, but <laughs> now you have another one. How <laughs> angry are you for tomorrow? Sorry. How angry are you to win? Yeah, now a lot because I haven't had my dinner still, <laughs> and uh, we, we have to achieve something we haven't done for 40 years, so you can imagine. Okay, one more. Hola. What can you say about the Porto players? Um, are, you, are there any in particular uh, of uh, playing Porto tomorrow? Uh, they have really good players. The players are very organized and trained well. And they're so very competitive and they're a great team. I wanted to ask you, I, the Premier League is very important. But the last couple of years of Arsenal, how important is tomorrow's game? Yes, the, not to deprioritize the Premier, but there's obviously big objectives in the club. So after so many years of not playing any year in this competition, so imagine the belief we have um, to reach the quarterfinals and to have the opportunity to have what we have tomorrow. And then we can see what happens. And there's obviously important matches. And then the last eight weeks, and that will tell us all.